everyone uh, today i just wanted to create a quick video on what we call dark flow or dark pool correlations uh, because i feel like this deserves its own video we have discussed these in their uh, in the dark pool dashboard video that we have in our crash course but i still wanted to create a separate video because this is a very useful chart and i'll explain how to best use it so uh, the reason i'm creating this video is that a while ago uh, around a sort of start of november uh, i posted this tweet on sort of dark pool data showing very different uh, analysis compared to if what everyone else was saying. So everyone was saying we are still in a very bearish market and markets are just going to go down this month. And obviously some people were saying it's going to go up, but uh, we are a data-based company. Uh, so we just looked at the data and options flow was somewhat bearish. But when we look at the dark pool data, this is what uh, we call dark pool correlations and we'll explain how these work. But uh, I, I made this tweet on how these dark pool correlations were somewhat signifying uh, a move up in the next uh, couple of months and so I posted this tweet uh, it's timestamped and you can actually if you go to the spice chart you will actually see that the market did rally over the last one month so obviously it's just one example uh, but I'll explain why this is not a cherry picked example and why we have like uh, we have uh, we have verified some of these uh, cases in the past and which is which is why we are uh, confident in making some future predictions now and uh, now this has turned slightly sort of on the other side so we have i just made this tweet uh, yesterday or two weeks two days ago now the data has slightly changed and gone sort of in the sli in slightly reversed manner where now over the next one or two months we are expecting somewhat of uh, a downtrend we'll see if that happens or not but i still wanted to take that take these two tweets and now explain how these dark pool correlations work uh, uh, this is not obviously dark pool correlation in front of you but the tweet was based on dark pool correlation this is just some options flow data so let's dive into uh, what dark flow and what dark pool correlations are so first uh, dark pool and dark uh, uh, dark pool correlation and dark flow works the best for indices or indexes uh, indexes would be spy qqq uh, xle etfs as well it doesn't work that well for stocks because for stocks we don't have really good correlations for most of the stocks for some we do and i'll explain how to find a good correlation but for most of them we don't so i'd highly advise it to use it on things like spy qqq etfs like sector etfs like xli xle things like that and that's where you get the best results now let's actually explain what these are so dark flow uh, uh, this white line is the price of the stock and since we are looking at spice dark pool summary you can go to this uh, go to the ticket dashboards then go to dark pool uh, we, on the white line is the price of the stock which would be spy's price over the last about eight years so this is a lot of data that we are looking at uh, this uh, orange line uh, i have the the blue skin if uh, you are on the black skin like if you are on the black theme theme then this might be a different color but this orange line this sort of uh, jiggly line going up and down uh, this orange line is what we call dark pool flows now dark pool flows uh, is the total amount uh, being put into potential dark pool bank uh, that's the definition of dark pool flows how do we figure it out and that's that's a question for another day uh, but these bars and these this this uh, orange line these are moving averages and just raw dark pool flows the reason we draw these together is because we want to see if there is a correlation or if there is a connection between the stock price move and the actual dark pool flow values. Now, a really good example of this is the COVID lows. As we were going uh, into the COVID low, as we were going, as we were moving down massively uh, during COVID, you can see that these dark pool flows started to increase significantly. That's just one example, but when that happened you can see like this uh, topped at around uh, end of march and if you actually go ahead and look at uh, the covid lows those covid lows happened at the end of march as well why is that because we hypothesize that since this is a mostly potential dark pool buying if this goes significantly higher then that means that institutions and big money is buying that particular stock in this case is buying spy so they are expecting some kind of a reversal uh, then in even other cases as well we had a dip a uh, slight dip and then these dark pool values went uh, through the roof and anytime you can see we had a dip here these values went up and then we had a dip again dip here these values immediately went up so anytime these values as we are seeing in the chart are going up 
uh, we are expecting a reversal to the upside uh, in the next couple of months or in the next let's say quarter now that is not visually very easy to see right we have to look at these bars we have to find find connections between the price and uh, the flow and the dark pool flow how can we make it simpler that's where the dark pool correlations come in so the dark pool correlations is let's explain what each point is so each point is one value or one particular bar in this chart and on the x axis we have the value of dark pool flows so let's say for instance in this instance each point for instance let's say this point is this particular day so at this day we had 34 uh, million in dark pool flows uh, this is the x axis this is like that point this is that particular day and then on the y axis we see what happened like from that point onwards like if we are standing at this what happened in the next 60 days or in the next 30 days what was the change in the price of the stock that's what we have on the y axis now we want to see a trending line here whether it is a green or a red line we want to see a trend we do not want to see a flat line so now what are all of these dots are representing uh, what are all these dots representing these dots are representing the correlation between dark pool flows and the change in the price of the stock over some next time period right now we are looking at 60 days and we can look at uh, 30 days as well okay now what happened when we shared uh, that tweet let let me see if i can open it again here so when i shared that tweet uh, this orange line or this big orange dot is where we are at right now so you can see we are around 13 so yeah we are around 13 million in dark pool flows now this chart is showing us that whenever we are at 13 uh, in terms of dark pool flows then from all those instances if the dark pool flows over the next 30 days since we just opened the 30 day chart let's actually switch to 60 day if the dark pool flows increase in the next few days or in the next two months then we do we tend to see somewhat of a rally or even if they don't and they stay the same uh, sometimes we see a rally but uh, the most important point here is that what what kind of dots are closest to this point and you can see that the closest to this point are these dots that are showing a down move of up to 40 percent uh, in the next two, 60 days which would be about maybe two or three months two or three as sort of months of trading days if let's say in the next one week this orange bar goes from here all the way to here let's say then we can say that any time that has happened in the last eight years price in the next 60 days has moved up uh, by above uh, by about uh, sort of by up to 40 percent so if this dot was here then I would be very confident based on data that we are going to see an upward move. If this dot is literally right here, then I would be slightly confident or at least somewhat confident that any time previously this dot has been here and let's say the, the dark pool flows don't change much and let's say this actually start to decrease a little bit and you can see they are already decreasing. The moving average and the bars are coming down. Let's say if this decreases just a little bit more, then during those times in the last eight years uh, the max upward move that we have seen is about 10 percent in three months three months like 60 days but the max downward downward moves that we have seen are up to 30 or 40 percent so at this point in time and even if these flows actually start to decrease a little bit more we are getting to an area where the max upper limit of a, an upward move based on the last eight years of data is at least four times or is on average four times smaller than the downward move that has happened than the downward moves that have uh, happened over the last eight years i hope that makes sense because like that's very very powerful uh, you can actually look at the dark pool data and the price changes and expect what could happen in the next uh, couple of months now when i made this tweet you can see this was pretty uh, much on the right so we were standing at around here so we were at the top we were not going down we were staying somewhat constant and let's say if we are standing here 
then unless these dark pool flows decrease significantly, as long as they don't and as long as they're still slowly decreasing, uh, our correlations, like any time we have been here, we have seen that from here onwards, even if these flows increase just a little bit, we have seen as these flows increase and since they have been increasing for here, uh, since they have been increasing since here, we have seen upward moves. So this should be taken as a correlation chart. If you see this green line going up, then an addition or an increase in dark pool flows is going to cause on average an increase in the stock price over the next 60 days, which is the time frame we are looking at. If this line was actually going down, then an increase in dark pool flows is actually going to cause the price of the stock to actually go down just based on this dark pool data. Now remember, this is just one data point. Although it is a very strong data point, uh, you should obviously always uh, do your due diligence. But what we are seeing here uh, is unless dark pool flows increase significantly, uh, we might actually see, uh, at in terms of probabilities, there might be a higher probability that we are going to see a downward move. In terms of an upper move, it can still happen. There are so many dots. Like in the previous eight years, there have been so many instances where uh, we have been around these areas, but price has moved or price has continued going up, but it hasn't gone up by more than 10% in up to three months. That's what you have to remember. These are all probabilities, but you can see this big uh, sort of uh, downward moves. Uh, these were always caused when we were around this level we are right now, or even sort of lower around 5 million or 6 million. So if we actually get up here, then again, we'll still have a very high probability that we can see a downward move. But if we start going higher in terms of dark pool flows, then as the dark pool flows increase, there is more institutional buying or there is more smart money and uh, buying this buying this stock, we are expecting the price to continue rallying. So that's the basic idea. Let's just look at one uh, other example, XLE. Uh, I want to show this to you because uh, many times people want to find sector rotations on sort of which sector is going to get, uh, which sector is getting the most institutional buying and smart money buying. And you can actually use this chart to gauge some of that as well. So we have I've been having a really nice move in energy from sort of late uh, 2021. Yeah, late 2021 all the way uh, to mid 2022. And then we have had a move uh, up again. And if you actually zoom in uh, into this chart, I can't like we don't have the ability to zoom in, but you can see that as we had a big dip. So let's just ignore COVID because that is very similar to SPY. But around here, let's before this rally, you can see the dark pool flows increasing as well. Then as we had this small leg down, the dark pool flows decreased significantly. So again, too much data to analyze. So let's just look at the dark pool correlations. Let's see if we find 30 days to be better or let's actually go to 60 days. Again, very similar pattern. The line is going up. This correlation line, this green line is going up, which in simple term means when these correlations increase or when these dark pool values increase, we are expecting mm, the price to increase as well. But since over the last couple of weeks, it has been going down. You can see this, maybe this orange bar at about 3.6. So around here, this orange ba ba bar was here. If this orange ba bar was around here, then in most of those cases over the last eight years, we have very small number of uh, dots below that bar but a lot of dots uh, above that bar, making like 20, 40% move in the next 60 days. So again, the probability of an upward move would be higher. But as we are decreasing in our flows, we are still okay. Like th there is still a higher probability that we'll move up because these dots are still giving us a maximum of minus 20% move. But on, on the higher end, we are getting 40, 50% uh, of moves that we have seen in the last uh, eight years. But if this keep decreasing, uh, and if these actually get to a level where, let's say around here, you can see around here, the price was here and then it, it dipped uh, quite a lot uh, from 60 to about 45, 50. And so anytime we had a dip, you can see these levels go down. And so let's say if this level actually goes down around here, it, it, it goes to 1, 1 1.5, then that could mean that those have been the instances in the past where we have seen massive 40, 60%, 80% even like, Okay, 61% is the max 61% up to 61% uh, move down. Obviously, I don't think we'll get a 61% move down. That's a pretty big outlier. But still, you can see these dots starting to increase the downward dots, which is the moves y axis since it's y axis, 
which is the downward move you can see these dots starting to increase and as these flows are getting thinner you can see the the dots higher uh, starting to decrease so the max limit uh, when we actually go below two or one is max of like 13 or 14 percent move but on the lower end we are going 35 40 percent in terms of moves so, so that gives us some ideas uh, on what institutions are doing what's happening on the dark pool side of things and that's i believe uh, i strongly believe it is one of the most powerful signals especially for etfs and indexes out there and we have been using it for over a year now uh, to gauge uh, market direction uh, of course uh, you need to add your own due diligence add in other factors as well but this single uh, sort of chart uh, gives you a pretty good idea on what institutions are doing and whether uh, they're giving you any signal so i hope uh, this is useful uh, just one last thing if you look at this for individual stocks you will probably see flatter lines so this is still uh, pretty flat because you have to look at where it starts from and where it uh, goes to again uh, there are no dots above and below where we are at right now so just ignore that always look at some of the dots above and some of the dots below the current point and then just a little bit ahead and then just a little bit uh, before that just to see what would happen if there is slightly increased dark pool buying or if there is sli a slightly decreased dark pool buying let's look at apple let's see if we find anything again uh, this line it's still pretty flat but it's starting to go down so slightly downward line which means if we are seeing sort of an increase uh, in dark pool buying then uh, the data isn't uh, too suggestive of a uh, of a big up or downward move because lots of dots above lots of dots below uh, so we are not getting a clear signal and that's what i meant when i said uh, this doesn't work well for stocks but it works really well for uh, etfs uh, so that's the video uh, i just wanted to stick with these two charts because i, uh, I believe they're very useful for retail traders and they provide uh, us an insight into sort of the smart money or the big institutions and what they're doing uh, so hopefully this was useful for you please let me know uh, in comments if you have any questions uh, but thanks a lot for listening and um, i'll see you guys around